to be a surprise. Hey, good morning. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Happy Wednesday. I got a surprise here. I tried to keep it a surprise, but he was already there. Good morning. And this is my... <laughs> father. I'm your father. Your earthly father. <laughs> this is my father. <laughs> My dad uh, decided to join me this morning. Mom was like, won't you, won't you hop on there with her? I said, yeah, Daddy, won't you get on here with me? I'm sure to have more people hop on here when they see you on here with me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, happy Wednesday, guys. We're halfway through the week. It's Wednesday's right smack dab in the middle of the week. So here we are drinking our coffee this morning. He's got his joys cup because he's wishing he was still on the mountains right now with cool weather and... He's down here in the humidity with us. <laughs> Dying, it's okay. <laughs> so anyways, here we are and we are still in the book, Seeing Beautiful Again by Lisa Turkhurst. Hey guys, and the uh, title today is When Unchangeable Feels Unforgivable. When Unchangeable Feels Unforgivable. And the key verse is Romans 12, 21, and it says overcome evil, with good. So if you're watching us live, give me hashtag one. If you're watching the replay, give me hashtag two. And we'll get going here on this Wednesday. So Lisa says, she says, when you think better days are ahead, you say things like, I dream of one day being a wife and mom or an actress or a chef or a scientist. Or I dream of one day opening my own coffee shop or writing a book. But when you're grieving, over something or someone that was taken away, you wish you could go back in time, right? You dream backward. I thought this was so interesting because I've never thought about it like this, but you're dream you dream backward. Grieving is dreaming in reverse. Grieving is dreaming in reverse. Hey, good morning, guys. They're all hopping on here. I knew they would. <laughs> it's all because of you, Dad. <laughs> anyway, so she says, instead of hoping for what one what will one day be you long for a more innocent time when you lived more unaware of tragedy so healing feels impossible because circumstances feel unchangeable let me say that again so healing feels impossible because circumstances feel unchangeable see if you resonate see if you resonate with any of these unchangeable situations listen to these listen to these when someone takes something i'll never get back when I have to face not just the end of a relationship, but the end of all the dreams and future plans that were attached to this person. When the pain seems never ending. When the outcome seems so final, I'm not sure how to go on. When someone hurts not just me, but my whole family. When the reminders of the pain never end because the one who hurt me is family. When they ruined an opportunity I'd worked my whole life for when they took the life of someone I loved, when they hurt me so deeply and wounded me so gravely, I'll never feel normal again. Do you resonate with any of those? With a grief so deep from all these painful situations, it's completely maddening to think forgiveness should apply here. What would forgiveness even accomplish? Why go through the deep work to forgive if it really wouldn't make any kind of a difference? And even if you did decide to forgive, how do you forgive when the ones who hurt you can't or won't be willing to cooperate? I understand all these questions because I've asked them and wrestled through them myself. And while I'll be the first in line to raise my hand and admit forgiveness is a hard step to take, it's also the only step that leads to anything good. Did y'all hear that? It's the only step that leads to anything good. Every other choice, including the choice not to do anything and remain where we are, just adds more hurt upon hurt. Here are a few truths I've been learning to hang on to in my heart when I'm struggling to step toward forgiveness. One, forgiveness is more satisfying than revenge. Romans 12, 19 through 21 tells us that. Revenge is you paying twice for a hurt that someone else did to you. You may think it will make you feel better in the short term, but in the long term, it will cost you, your, cost you more emotionally and spiritually than you'd ever want to pay. 
The only thing your revenge will do is add your wrongdoing on top of theirs. Forgiveness doesn't let the other person off the hook. It actually places them in God's hands. And then as you walk through the forgiveness process, it softens your heart. The peace from forgiveness is more satisfying than revenge. Two, our God is not a do-nothing God. 1 Peter 5, 7 tells us that. Our God is not a do-nothing God. I was recently participating in a Q&A session where someone in the audience asked, how can God just do nothing? The pain in her question was deep. <clears throat> Gracious, do I ever understand what that feels like? I remember feeling so disillusioned during my journey with art. When you are suffering so much that each next breath seems excruciating, it's easy to start assuming God is doing nothing. But we don't serve a do-nothing God. He is always working. God is always doing something. God is there in the midst of it all. With art, God wasn't just trying to change his behavior. He was rescuing his soul. There was never one moment when God was doing nothing. And if you're just hopping in on this uh, in this devotion. Maybe you haven't heard the others with Lisa, but she shares her story with her and her husband, how they went through a separation. He, um, he, he had an affair. And so she talks about that, that pain of going through that whole um, situation and, um, and how God has restored their marriage. Okay. So anyway, number three, number three, the enemy is the real villain. Ephesians 6, 11 through 12 tells us that, that the enemy is the real villain. Yes, people do have a choice to sin against us or not. And certainly when we are hurt, the person hurting us may have willingly played into the enemy's plan. But it helps me to remember that this person isn't my real enemy. The devil is real and on an all-out assault against all things good. He hates the word together. And he especially works with great intentionality against anything that brings honor and glory to God. Oh, friend, the heartbreaks you carry are enormous. And your desire to undo some of what has been done is so very understandable. Honestly, on some levels, that's honorable. It's okay to carry both the desire to want things to change and an acceptance that on this side of eternity, they won't change. You can carry both. You can honor both. Adding truth into our perspective makes even the unchangeable forgivable. None of this is simple. These aren't truths to simply read through, but to sit with and sit in until we can dare to walk in it, live it out, and maybe even one day declare it as a truth we've decided to own. And then she prays, Lord, help me not just make peace with things that are unchangeable, but move forward in the beauty of forgiveness. I know you are not a do-nothing God, and I trust you with all the heartbreak I'll face on this side of eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. I like that. Our God is not a do-nothing God. He's always doing something. Anything to add, Dad? <laughs> well, not really, I don't guess. <laughs> kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> but, but, but forgiving some people... Forgiving someone that's done you wrong, it, it really helps you in your in your daily walk with Christ. It uh, it to me in my own experience uh, years ago, I had this happen, and I had to get down and pray and and, and really uh, forgive that person. Of course, we know you don't ever forget the thing, but you can really forgive in yeah. your heart, and God will take that away. Yeah. And like uh, Emily read a while ago, that. Uh, now the the ball's in the other court. You've yeah. done your part. Yeah. So, yeah. If somebody's done you wrong. Forgive them. Yeah. Pray and ask God to help you. Right. That was a good part. Forgiveness doesn't let the other person off the hook. It actually places them in God's hands, and then you get that peace That's from right. from forgiveness. It softens your own heart, and the peace from forgiveness is more satisfying than revenge. So, yep. That's true. That's true. Well, y'all have a wonderful Wednesday. Be blessed. 
Smile. <laughs> You're halfway through. I know for Aiken County, school is almost over, guys. <laughs> Parents hang in there. Kids hang in there. It's almost summer. Y'all have a um, y'all have a wonderful week, uh, Wednesday, and I will see y'all tomorrow morning on the EMJ Daily. Bye, guys.